Hey, Pickup! In this video, we're going to be starting section 5.3, which is solving trig equations. So we've been proving them. Now we're going to solve them. So there's a few things you need to remember first. Um, first thing you should remember when solving are the periods of each trig function. Right, so remember the period of sine of theta is 2 pi. Same with cosine of theta and the reciprocal functions. And then tangent has a period of just pi. So you need to make sure you remember that for the unit circle, as well as honestly the whole unit circle. Um, okay, so what is the process when solving? Another thing to keep in mind. So the process is pretty straightforward when you're solving for a trig equation. Um, the first thing you're going to do is isolate the trig function. When you're isolating the trig function, you're doing this using algebra skills <clears throat> as if you were solving for x. The second thing you want to do is rewrite it in terms of one trig function. Once it's isolated. Then once it's rewritten, you're going to solve for the trig function on the unit circle. Okay, and then um, for all values, you need to make sure you write an equation. Okay, and then our equations, when we're solving for all values, have specific notation. Um, let's do an example of it, and then I'll talk about what I mean. So, here's the example I'd like us to do. Solve or find all solutions. of 3 tangent squared of x minus 4 equals negative 3. So first thing we're going to do is isolate that trig function. So I'm going to start by doing my basic algebra skills. I want to move my 4 over first. And negative 3 plus 4 is 1. I'm going to divide by 3, so isolating. And I've got 1 third. So now I've um, almost isolated it. Now it's squared, and I don't want it to be squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And remember when you take the square root of both sides, you will have plus or minus, and this is going to be the square root of one-third. Make sure your radical is covering the entire function. And, or the fraction, sorry. And now here we have an issue because we don't want a square root, right? This is the same as the square root of one over the square root of three. So we need to rationalize the denominator. 
So that means we're actually left with plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. So now we've got it solved. Um, and now we need to solve for the trig function on the unit circle. So when I think about my unit circle, when what x values, right, what angles are going to give me root 3 over 3, both positive and negative? So this is also where you need to keep in mind the period. So remember, the period is pi. So between um, 0 and pi, what are my solutions? So there's going to be two, right? First one is going to be pi over 6. And then the second one is 5 pi over 6, right? Now, I asked for all solutions. Because I'm asking for all solutions, I need to write an equation. So it's not just pi over 6, right? It's pi over 6 plus the period, depending on how many times I'm going to run the unit circle. So it's going to be pi over 6 plus, uh, I'm going to have my variable be k because that's just what Alex has been doing. Um, so this is just my variable, so k is representing the amount of um, cycles, right? Are we going once around the unit circle, twice around the unit circle, right? So plus k times pi, where k, so we're going to do a comma, k is an element of integers. And we'll talk about that in a second. This is also going to be plus k times pi. And um, k, again, has to be an integer, right? Uh, and let's talk about this real quick. So first of all, we use we use k pi we use k times pi um, comma k is an element of the integer set. So it's a, like a z and then you put like an extra line. Um, to mean all integer multiples of pi. And if you think all the way back, integers, remember, those are your number line numbers, right? So that's like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So k can only be those numbers because that's how many cycles, right? We're not going around like one and a half times. We're either going like within 1, 2, 3, right? Or you could go negative, you could go the opposite way. So the symbol, a couple new symbols for you. Maybe if you're listening, you know what they mean, but I would write it down. So this symbol, it kind of looks like an E, means is an element of. This is really popular in the math world. And then the symbol... Um, it's like a Z, it's called like boldface Z. Um, so it's like a Z with this extra line means the set of all integers. Okay. So uh, we're saying that k is an element of all integers. So that's what it has to be. All right, there's one more kind of example you could have, and that is if, I think I have enough room. Squeeze it. Um, if it's not all solutions, but all solutions of an interval. So let's do find all solutions.
in the interval. Hard bracket, zero, so including zero to two pi with a soft bracket. So if it is going around 360, we would only say two, zero, we wouldn't say two pi because it's not included in our interval. So four cosecant squared of x plus two equals 18. So same deal, I'm going to subtract two To get 16, I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get 4. I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get plus or minus 2. Um, oh, I just took the square root. I don't know why I wrote squared still. Oops. Okay, so cosecant is either positive or negative 2. Now remember. Remember that cosecant is equivalent to 1 over sine. So when I like to think, okay, well, what's cosecant? Um, when is cosecant? Like what x value will give me positive or negative 2? Remember, this is saying the same thing um, as 1 is sine, the reciprocal, so positive or negative 1 half. And sometimes it's just easier to think of it in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine of, is, sine of what is positive or negative one-half? Well, that's a bit easier, right? That occurs four times, and it's between 0 and 2 pi, so that occurs at pi over 6 in the first quadrant, right? 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, because it's plus or minus, right? Um, so remember, I'm basically saying what when the y value is 1 half, what is the angle? Or negative 1 half. So that's why we have four answers. And those are the four potential values. And then if it was 3 pi, we would have to keep going. So you do need to make sure you pay attention to the interval. And that's, that's the gist of it.